Hello everyone, so we have an update on Live Portrait JK Notes of the Custom Notes Package version 2. I would say this has way better performance in terms of loading speed. Everything has improved a lot. Now this is really cool because we can use our videos and cameras to do our face motions and it can be doing a lot realistic emotions compared with the other talking avatar. So let's see how we can do something with this. Uh, there's a new live portrait update for the KJ notes and we can experience how we can use that. The performance is way faster than what we use in version one. The custom nodes themselves, the architecture or how we do the nodes connections is way different. As you can see, there are other data types here. We have the pipeline and then the chopper. One of the good things is that we don't have to rely on inside face anymore. The author of these custom nodes has created alternative face detection libraries using MediaPipe. This is from Google and it is open source under MIT and Apache 2.0 licenses, which you can use for your live deployment servers. Whether you want to use it for commercial purposes or personal purposes, you can use this library as well. So, I will assume a lot of website AI web services will integrate live portrait into their video services. A lot of AI video generators leverage open source in the back end. I think they will be integrating this and it will gain more popularity using live portrait. So we have lots of new things covered. As you can see, the new update of live portrait can capture videos from webcams. Here we have seen the webcam capture custom nodes. Again, this is another custom nodes installation that requires you to install it to run smoothly. Live portrait itself is totally different. Right now, we are not only connecting to custom nodes. Instead of the previous versions, we have the pipeline and also the chalk info. Of course, we need the source image and then the driving images for your AI animations of the avatar. Now, we have new custom nodes in this custom nodes package, which is the live portrait chopper that I have just mentioned previously. This will be another way of getting alternative face detection models. For example, we have the chopper from media pipe instead of using insight face. You can use that as well, and it will be able to run in your local environment or your deployed cloud server. This is way faster. I have tested it before and I have shared my performance running the progress capture. The video recordings in my Patreon group show that a one minute video takes only one minute to generate. That is excellently fast. Other than the webcam, we have the image to video feature. Therefore, we use one image for the talking avatar and capture the face motions from driving videos. We can do something like that with our AI video results. As you can see, there are more custom nodes connecting together. We have the mask shape to create a mask for the moving areas of the face, as well as the live portrait retargeting settings. This is totally different. It's not in one custom node pack in the live portrait process as we had in previous versions. This gives us alternatively more customization for our workflow. If you don't want to use the retargeting for the lips and eyes, you can just disconnect these custom nodes. Lastly, we have videos to videos, which is similar to image to videos, but then we use videos for source images and it can take multiple image frames as a list of images to process in the live portrait chopper, resulting in better performance overall in processing within the live portrait custom nodes. We will test that in these videos. I have also integrated the latest live portrait in the mimic motions for the AI characters actions and face detection, generating enriched face motions for the AI characters. Here I have the image to videos feature. Again, this is the new version of the Live Portrait Custom Nodes Pack from KJ Notes. We are using this workflow, which is also available in the Comfy UI Live Portrait KJ Dev. You have the subfolder examples. A lot of people have missed this part when they download these custom nodes. It is included in the examples subfolder. So you don't have to ask me where the workflow is or anything like that. You already download the workflow once you download this Comfy UI Custom Nodes Package go inside your subfolder and find the examples folder and you will have this workflow already. I made a little change here. Instead of using the load videos feature, I am using load videos by path. 
this is more flexible for me. I can use a folder path for my video files instead of uploading another copy of image files or video files into Comfy UI itself with fewer duplications of files. Here, I have recorded my face and facial expressions and I will be using this image as a talking avatar. So, let's try this one and see how it goes. And as you can see, the retargeting right here by default in this workflow does not have the retargeting info connected. So if you want to use the eyes and lips retargeting, you need to connect this retargeting info to the live portrait process. The optional retargeting info should be connected here. At this moment, I will just rely on the driving videos themselves to bring the face motions for this image. Let's see how it works in my example. It's a pretty short video, so I set it to zero to fully generate the whole length of this. It's very fast. I have not fast forwarded this process because I want to show you guys how fast it is. There are lots of big improvements in this version compared to the previous live portrait. The only loading time is when you load the video image frames in the source videos and the driving videos. Once the data goes to the live portrait chopper and then to the live portrait process, this part is really fast. So I will let it run and you can experience how much time it takes for this short video clip. There are 700 image frames processed already for the driving image. As you can see, each element of live portrait is going really fast. Lastly, it composites all the image frames together into one video. And there you go. We are done with the video already. It took about one minute, maybe around a hundred seconds. So within two minutes, this was finished. You can set the frame rate to 30 to make it smoother. For example, I tuned it up to 30, which is a lot better for this situation. However, there is still some morphing. Sometimes it will morph. If your source image has less head movement, it will be more natural. Now, let's try the other one, which is the videos to videos. Here, we have another workflow, which is the videos to videos. As you can see, it's very similar to the image to videos connections, where we have the chopper for our face detection libraries, which is MediaPipe. For the videos to videos workflow, MediaPipe chopper is also included. We have the live portrait models and the live portrait chopper custom nodes to process the face and then live portrait processing for making the talking avatar animations. The only difference is that instead of using a driving image, we will use a source video for the videos to videos conversion. And of course we have the driving videos. Here I will be changing something. I will use the same driving videos as I have in this workflow. I have the same videos. For the frame caps, we are setting the same integer which matches the video length. Therefore, the source and driving videos will have the same length. This is something we always have to remember as it is essential for the process. Without that, you will get an error when generating the videos. Let's say, for my source videos, I will use something else. Here, I have a stock video, again of fashion models. We will animate the face with different face motions using the same face motions from the previous examples bringing it to the image and changing it in these examples for the videos. Let's run this and see. As you can see, the live portrait media pipe chopper is using the CPU for processing the face detection, etc. This helps a lot with the loading time, diversifying GPU loading work. It is much more efficient. 
as you can see, the video results are already coming together. The loading speed is really fast for this one. The face motions have changed a lot compared to my source videos and including my audio voiceover. It will be totally different. I will put that in at the end of the videos for guests to check out. Another thing I have been doing is bringing in other examples for videos to videos because it's really fun and loads very fast. As you can see, the speed of this version's live portrait compared with the older versions is totally different in terms of loading speed and GPU processing. The CPU processing speed is also totally different right now. It's a really great update. Just look at this. It's nonstop loading and it just pops up within one minute to finish 250 image frames. We have the result here already and it looks really good. It's very natural. The only thing that's not good is when hands are put on top of the face. There's some blur, but if it is talking individually, it looks very natural overall. I have updated the Mimic Motions workflow using the new Live Portrait custom notes, which we will implement in these videos. As you can see, this is the previous old version of Live Portrait. It had fewer custom notes and was much slower than what we just experienced. But uh, yeah, everything in here is not going to work anymore. So we have to delete this. Again, we have to use the frame count. This is the driving video and we have the face warped videos, which are our source videos in this case. Here we have the source videos loading and we will put that on another side of it. One thing we don't need to use inside face if you are deploying to your cloud server for video production or such. We only need this part right now. And there you go. We have the live portrait updated in this Mimic Motions workflow. The first part will animate the character movement. For example, you can use that for dancing, any activities, movement, kicking, punching, whatever you want to do for the characters. Next will be a face swap to make the face a little clearer and better without morphing. Then we will animate the face to avoid a robotic feel. This will be done using our face warped videos and putting that into live portrait. So we connect the face swapped videos from another group seen here. Then we pass this as source videos. Next, we will have our loading face motions here. I will put the load videos here as it is just easier for you guys to run this. But you have to set the frame caps to the same number as the source videos. Therefore, I have set this low frame cap from the beginning of the loader group. And of course, this is the same frame cap number as the face warped videos because this is what is generated from the source number. We will be ready to run the whole thing. Again, this process is the same as the example live portrait. But other than the output image from here, we also have the live portrait output videos and pass that to an upscaler. I have used tile upscale for this one. I mentioned this in the previous videos, talking about how to use the control net tile and dual resolutions upscale without breaking the pixels and how to place each image in your result. Then we have the video output of the tile upscale that will finally bring it to remove the background. That's optional. If you want to use that, you can. If you don't understand why you have to use the remove background or put a green backdrop, then don't use that. Just find out by yourself. This is another way. Or you can change the background here by connecting to another load image node. But there's no point in doing that in Mimic Motion because in Mimic Motions, you have your own generated image already in the loading part of this workflow. So, you already have the character that matches that background, as opposed to when you get your reference image ready in the first loading group here. Let's try bringing something to run on this workflow to test if it works for both Mimic Motion and Live Portrait. Okay, so we have the result here. Let's go back to the beginning of this workflow. We have the loading videos for the dance videos. For Mimic Motions, we have the image of an AI-generated girl character used for a dancer video. Here, we have the Mimic Motions capturing the pose of each dancing movement. Bringing it back to the first generation, we see a refined face here for Mimic Motion. This always happens in Mimic Motions. If you generate using one sampler of Mimic Motions, your character's face won't be consistent. Even in a few seconds of animation, it will change. Even if I use a restore face, it won't take a lot of refinement to improve this. Therefore, we have the second step, which is using the face swap. 
or you can use instance ID, whichever you prefer, to have a consistent face. Again, we will have something better here. The smiles and everything look okay, but we want more natural facial emotions. Then we bring it to live portrait using the same methodology we went through in the previous videos to videos workflow. We bring the face swapped videos from our previous result here and bring it back to resize the image. And then we have the driving videos again. We are using this demo face motions. We process that really quickly and the result is more expressive in the eyes and lips showing more emotional expressions and not too robotic. Once we complete everything for the characters and the backgrounds, all the generations in this AI, we bring it to the tile upscaler. This is what I previously talked about in the previous videos, using control net tile and tile diffusions. To upscale, I use multiply 2 by default. You can use a larger scale if you prefer, but 2 is good enough for what we have here. So right here, we have the exact same videos, but the size and scales are larger. Overall, the resolution is higher. However, we have not used upscaling models to refine all the colorations and details. If you want to use that, you will be required to bring it to another workflow for upscaling. I would not recommend running the image upscaler again in one single workflow as you might run out of memory sooner or later. So this is how everything looks so far. Of course, we have the background removal. Here I have a solid color for the green backdrop. You can use a load image, for example, to have a background image. If you want to change the background of these videos, you can do that as well. But in these examples, we don't need that because I already have a good reference image here. So this is the whole video generated using Mimic Motion, then Live Portrait, and then Tile Upscale. Performance is more stable right now. The Live Portrait just takes a little part of the video generation, but has really fast loading speed. So that is it for this video. I hope this inspired you guys to make your own animations, whatever you want to do. I will see you in the next videos. Have a nice day. See ya.